Well, I think it's safe to say that you are the first comedian slash pastor slash author that I have had the privilege to meet. <laughs> okay, there it is, all right. I think it's an unusual combination. And yeah. so, no pressure, but I'm expecting some amazing insights from you today. Well, and, and I, uh, I, I think you're gonna be bitterly disappointed. <laughs> no, I, hopefully, I, I, hopefully, so. I can, hopefully I can kind of hit, meet that low part of the bar for you though. Well, I'm hoping so. I hope so, I, I'm yeah. Hope so. And so before we actually dive into the topic today, I'm wondering if you can give us some insight into how you juggle these roles, because I suspect it is a bit of a unique combination. Comedian, author, pastor, how does that play out in your life? Well, they're actually, they're actually, um, they're not as uh, incongruent as you might think. They actually fit quite nicely. Um, I have found that the most um, effective pastors are ones that have a sense of humor. And now look, I love religious people. You're a great source of material for me. <laughs> There's a sense of humanity about yourself and people can relate to you. And so if you're just kind of this stodgy, stoic, sort of just expositor of the word, and, you know, people can listen to a certain level, but then after a while, it's just information and it's disconnected. Then it's like, I, I can't connect to that. Mm -hmm. What humor does is that humor brings the, the humanity in. And so being a pastor, using humor helps kind of let people sigh and uh, relax and then go, okay, he knows what I'm going through. And um, what humor does is it levels the playing field because not everybody has success in common, mm -hmm. but we all have failure. Mm -hmm. And what we typically laugh at, what we find funny is, is our human foibles. A man can think of absolutely nothing. It's God's special gift. <laughs> what comedy does is comedy discloses, again, the frailty of man, the humanness of man. And so when people are laughing at themselves, they're disclosing something about themselves. Mm -hmm. They're disclosing the, oh yeah, I do that too, or mm -hmm. oh yeah, I remember when I did that. Their guard comes down. Their guard comes down mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're admitting in their laughter, oh yeah, I do the exact same thing. Song of Solomon, listen to him. Song of Solomon. <laughs> and the guys are going, Proverbs? <laughs> Is that Proverbs? So in this series, Disrupting Religion, uh, Brett McBride uses the term religion, kind of referring to the, um, the traditions, the, the rules, the rituals, the, the sacrifices that we, that we read about. Um, what do you think of when you hear the term religion? Like people use it differently. Right. Yeah. And so how do you usually use that word? What religion does is religion creates cultures that have nothing to do with the relationship God to man, man to God. Mm -hmm. so, so what do you uh, mean by that? What happens to people is that their culture, their religion has created a culture. Mm -hmm. And what it means is that this culture now is, this is the most important thing. This is the hill worth dying on. And it's like, really? And so what happens is, is religion creates this um, kind of us for no more kind of thing, or the PLU church, people like us. And what, they, what you do and when you're in a religious environment is you start finding people that agree with you. And instead of us being created in the image of God, mm -hmm. we start recreating God in our image. And all of a sudden, we find those things where, you know, Jesus thinks like me. Jesus likes what I like. Jesus values what I value. And then we find these little scriptures that we kind of find this little niche where we kind of create this theology and this religion in the larger body of Judeo-Christian values and we narrow it down to fit us so that we can then feel comfortable mm -hmm. in the way we believe. We can even be comfortable in our own sin. We can look at, we can justify a life of sin by our own religion and our own culture. Mm -hmm. It creates factions within the church. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's devastating for the kingdom of, of God because uh, religion, uh, religion tears the kingdom down. Mm -hmm. It doesn't build the kingdom up, it tears it down. And Jesus said it best when he said, you know, you're not teaching the things of God, you're teaching religion taught by men. Right. And you know, the, the scriptures where it talks about, you know, your lips draw near to me, but your hearts are far from me. That's religion. Right. That's that thing. Having a, uh, Paul tells Timothy, having a form of godliness yet denying its power. That's what 
the negative mm -hmm. uh, connotation mm -hmm. of religion is. So it's like, um, I guess anything that that looks like church but doesn't draw me closer to God is religion, in my estimation. And when we read through the New Testament, the Gospels, we can see that Jesus really was a major disruptor. Yeah, I guess I, my, my favorite would be in, in the synagogue when Jesus comes in and the and it's, it's, it's in Luke, Matthew, and Mark, but it's the, there's a man there with the crippled hand. And, and it says that in that Sunday, or in that Saturday rather, while they're in synagogue, they're there waiting to plot against Jesus to see if he would heal. They're there to see if he's gonna heal on the Sabbath day. Jesus knows this. And so he, instead of avoiding it, he leans into it. He just goes ahead and disrupts the service. And that's when he asks the questions, you know, well, what's, what's, is it, what, what's better to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath day? Mm -hmm. So he disrupts the, ser this, the synagogue meeting, but he also disrupts this one guy's life for the better. And so when you disrupt religion, it actually is to our benefit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I'm not gonna get my way, but yeah, but do you get what you need? Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I may not like this, but it's what I need. I want to be. I want to be the blind man's best friend, trying to tell him what Jesus is doing. <laughs> he don't know everybody's watching Jesus, but the blind guy. Can you imagine the conversation? Hey, what's Jesus doing? <laughs> he just hocked up a loogie. <laughs> oh, gross. What's he doing now? He's playing with it. <laughs> Ew. What's he doing now? <laughs> He's going to put it on your face. <laughs> so remember at the beginning of our chat, I was talking to you and I was saying that because of your unique roles, <laughs> comedian, pastor, author, I had really high expectations of our conversation today. Remember uh -oh. that? Yeah. Did yeah. I do okay? Yeah. You did not disappoint. Oh, phew. okay, yes. good. Oh, I okay. really appreciate some of the things you've, you've shared today. And oh, I thank you. Certainly.